This is a video idea I've been sitting on for a while, and I want to preface this video by saying if you enjoy NXT, that's great. This is just my opinion, and my opinion only. Ah, uh, the topic of NXT. NXT is such a hot topic in 2020, and a lot of people really, they spend their time talking about how it's different. Different is the word that people use when often describing the state of NXT since it went live on the USA Network. In my opinion, I would say that's when the fall of NXT began. And I'm not saying that NXT is bad or horrible wrestling. There's a lot of good wrestling on NXT every week. What I'm saying is the golden era of NXT is over. That golden era from 2014 to 2019 has come to an end. When I think of NXT now, I think of Johnny Gargano losing to Leon Ruff. I think of Robert Stone puking. I think of a NFL player being treated as a big deal in a desperate ploy to save ratings. That's what I think of an NXT in 2020. When I think of the golden era of NXT, I think of guys like Shinsuke Nakamura, Kevin Owens, Finn Balor, and I think of ladies like Sasha Banks, Bianca Belair, Charlotte Flair, and Asuka. We are far removed from those days. I shouldn't say far removed. We're literally only a year removed, a year and some months removed from the epic two out of three falls match between Johnny Gargano and Adam Cole at TakeOver New York. Put that in perspective. We're a year and six months removed from that. And now the NXT product that I've been watching since October 2019, when it went live on USA Network up against AEW Dynamite, that product is completely different. It feels more quote unquote main roster like with the the cheesy storylines i mentioned robert stone puking the velveteen dream storylines the brain dead push of him regardless of allegations that's a whole topic in it of itself i'm not even going to get into that but with this video today i'm going to be talking about the great things that happened in nxt in their golden era and why i loved it so much and ultimately what marked the end of that era First, let's talk a little bit about the early days of NXT, before it was on the WWE Network, when I honestly don't even know how people watched NXT back then. I guess it was on WWE.com or YouTube, but I really don't know for sure. I just remember seeing matches like Chris Jericho and Daniel Bryan and Seth Rollins winning this tournament, becoming the first NXT champion, and then Big E becoming NXT champion. And I remember when The Shield debuted on, on uh, Survivor Series 2012 and they were saying oh these guys are jump stars from NXT and I remember looking up NXT and just being like wow this is cool uh, again I was young at the time so I couldn't really figure out how to watch it but that was kind of NXT's humble beginnings it started out as uh, Florida Championship Wrestling and then it turned into this idea this idea that Triple H had where look we're gonna make this like a development system instead of signing talent from around the world we're going to develop our own talent i don't know a lot about those days i would recommend you check out the fcw documentary on the network it's really my best recommendation for you so i'm not even going to spend too much time talking about that i'm just going to get right into the time where nxt was put on the map to me and a lot of fans so that was nxt arrival in february of 2014 the wwe network had just launched and the idea was that nxt was going to be the flagship brand on the WWE Network. It was going to be the go-to. TakeOver Arrival was awesome. I mean, we had Cesaro versus Sami Zayn. They had a 20-minute classic. Paige versus Emma for the NXT Women's Championship. And Neville versus Bo Dallas. Bo Dallas was a great character in NXT. And Neville, we all know him as Pac now in AEW. Just a really good way to start the, the brand. This was their first TakeOver. This is literally where it all started. And then from here, later on in 2014, we get the announcement of the signings of Kevin Owens, Finn Balor, and Hideo Itami, better known as Kenta in New Japan. This is when even more people started paying attention to NXT. These guys were indie darlings. People loved them. They had dedicated fan bases all over the world. So this brought in a whole new set of eyeballs to NXT that wasn't there. And it was really one of the big selling points of the WWE Network. I mean, sure, you could get WrestleMania for $9.99 as Triple H reminded us every week during that era. But if you wanted original content, NXT was pretty much the only original live wrestling content you could see. 
every week. From here, we had the first NXT TakeOver to be named NXT TakeOver. And this was Charlotte Flair's coming out party. She has this match with Natalia, a really good match. And this puts Charlotte on the map to wrestling fans. And we all know she go on to be one of the biggest stars in, the, in wrestling today. She's one of the greatest of all time. And she really got her start here. This is what NXT is all about. Making stars. And Charlotte was the perfect example of a star being made in NXT. And Natalya was the perfect foil. And it's like now everything in NXT just feels so hot-shotted. I don't know if that's just me. If you guys agree, uh, let me know. I'm not going to go through every TakeOver, though, for the sake of this video. So next one I want to talk about is TakeOver Our Evolution. Sami Zayn beats Adrian Neville for the NXT Championship. Kevin Owens attacks Sami Zayn after the match, after making a babyface debut early on in the show. And I just remember being so hyped for this, this moment. I love this story. I thought it's one of the best feuds of all time. Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn. This story was so well done. This was proof that these guys were more than quote unquote work rate wrestlers, indie darlings. They could tell a story in the ring too. And the match they had at the following takeover where Kevin Owens beat Sami Zayn to a pulp and won the title by ref stoppage. For me, this was when NXT took another level. Kevin Owens was NXT champion. And then Vince McMahon saw the guy and was like, look, I got to move him up to the main roster. I can't have this guy in NXT wrestling in front of a pre-taped audience on a pre-taped show for one hour a week. We can't have that. So Kevin Owens gets brought up to the main roster. And I would say this is where things started to get a little rocky for NXT. Kevin Owens comes up. He beats John Cena. And then he loses, I think it was three times in a row to John Cena. Now we're looking at NXT like, Okay, these guys, they're not going to be on the same level as John Cena, as Triple H, as Brock Lesnar. We, we get the pecking order. So the, the, it's established already off top that these guys coming up from NXT, especially if they came from Ring of Honor or another place where they had fans already, they're not going to be allowed to see their full potential. It's just the way it is, unfortunately. It's just how petty WWE can be sometimes. The way NXT talent is used on the main roster, that's a topic for another video. So I'm just going to move on. Big difference between NXT TakeOvers now and NXT TakeOvers then is the match quality. Every match on NXT TakeOver used to feel important. It was four or five matches and they all meant something. Let's look at TakeOver New Orleans. 2018 before WrestleMania. The opening match is the inaugural NXT North American Championship match. I mean, you got Ricochet in there, Velveteen Dream, just loaded with talent. Six man ladder match, Adam Cole wins, becomes the inaugural North American Champion. Let's look at TakeOver In Your House from 2020. The opening match on this card Mia Yim, Shotzi Blackheart, and Tegan Knox versus Candice LeRae, Dakota Kai, and Raquel Gonzalez. That's the kind of match that you would see being filmed as like a dark match before a normal takeover. And that would air on the takeover, on the on the NXT after takeover, when they would do like a recap, the Wednesday after takeover. That's the kind of match that that was. That's not an NXT takeover match. Even if you go back to takeover Portland from February, from February of 2020, they start the show with Keith Lee versus Dominic Dijakovic. An awesome match. Just the takeover quality in 2020, late 2019, it just, it hasn't been the same. It's been a lot of recycled feuds. We saw Adam Cole and Velveteen Dream go on way past the time it needed to go. Cole and Johnny Gargano went on way past the time it needed to go. They, they fought for the whole year of 2019, it felt like. And that's okay. But after a while, like, where do you go after the two out of three falls match? Where do you go from there? The, the lack of talent, the depth in the roster, it's been a real big problem with NXT. They're, they're, for lack of a better term, they're a minor league. They don't have star power, and they're asked to put on a two-hour show and compete with the likes of, like, Kenny Omega, John Moxley, Chris Jericho. These are legitimate wrestling stars. They may not be mainstream superstars like The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin, but they're stars in the wrestling world. They're stars in the term 
the definition of the term in 2020. NXT roster of Leon Ruff, Cameron Grimes, Tommaso Ciampa. Yeah, all good wrestlers. They cannot compete with the talent on AEW. And that's the whole basis of this video. That's really when the fall of NXT started, in my opinion. It all began when they went live up against AEW Dynamite. It started out hot. The first episode, I remember that Finn Balor made his return to NXT. That was hot. What is a key theme here? Whenever NXT is relevant in late 2019 or 2020, there's somebody from the main roster making a return involved. Finn Balor makes his debut on the day, uh, he makes his re debut in NXT on the debut episode of NXT Live, confronts Adam Cole. Massive moment. Charlotte Flair comes down to NXT, becomes NXT champion. Everybody's talking about NXT again. The last takeover we just had, the most recent one, I forgot the name of it. Ember Moon makes her re debut. That's all everybody's talking about is Ember Moon making her re debut. Nobody's talking about the main event of the show. I can't even tell you what main event is the last takeover. I can't even tell you the name of the last takeover. Takeover War Games is coming up. This is an all time low in terms of interest that I have ever seen NXT in my time as a fan. I was a diehard NXT fan. I used to watch NXT every single week. Whether I caught it Wednesday when the episode aired or the next day or I went on the network whenever I had time on Saturday, I was watching NXT every week. It was can't miss. Now I'm watching AEW Dynamite. I'm not watching NXT like I used to. I could turn on NXT next week and what am I going to see? Johnny Gargano versus Damian Priest and Leon Ruff or Cameron Grimes. It feels like an episode of main event at times. This is the last point I'm making that I'm getting out of here for this video. What top indie talent has WWE signed in 2020? Eddie Kingston, Warhorse, Ricky Starks, Thunder Rosa. They're missing out on all of these talents. I don't know if it's because these people, they've seen what happened with, the, with guys like Finn Balor and Nakamura, how they've been buried and they don't want to go to WWE or WWE's not offering the same amount of money. I mean, they've missed out on a ton of talent. Penta and Phoenix, LAX, now proud and powerful in AEW, Orange Cassidy, they've missed out on a ton of top tier indie talent. WWE used to go out there and find the best. Kevin Owens, Ricochet, Aleister Black, Finn Balor, Nakamura, all these great indie or international talents. Now, all of a sudden, the best talent they can bring in is Pat McAfee. And Pat McAfee is the best thing on NXT every single week. That is another problem in and of, in and of itself. Pat McAfee, a former NFL punter, now podcaster, is the best thing about NXT. That tells you how far, in my opinion, that sums it up in, in a sentence, how far NXT has fallen. Thank you guys all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. If you're new to the channel, Hit that subscribe button and I hope you all have a great day.